The following is a presentation of CUTV Sports and CUTV Sports One. Welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for the week of October 10th, 2017. I'm your host, Gary Smith. On today's show, we're going to play a little catch-up with Coach Dunn since we had to cancel last week's show due to a computer uh, deciding to take a week's vacation here in the studio. So we're going to talk to Coach Dunn about last week's game at Slip Rock and then this past most recent game against IEP. And then we're going to take a look at the upcoming opponent, Clarion, for homecoming and homecoming memories and scores and standings throughout the conference and all kinds of fun stuff. But uh, without further ado, let's welcome uh, Coach Dunn to the set. Coach, uh, thanks for coming up. Uh, had a week off last week because, like I said, we had a computer that uh, just wouldn't turn on, yeah. which which happens around here. And you came in, we were tr still trying to troubleshoot some stuff, but we're on the air now and uh, going to talk about Vulcan football. And sure. like I said, playing a little bit of catch up, uh, Coach. Um, we knew at the beginning of the year that these last two weeks were going to be, you know, make it or break it. And it always seems to be that that way. And the, whoever makes the schedule in the PSAC always likes to put those two games back to back for whatever whatever reason. But we knew it was going to be, you know, a very uh, Tough sledding and, you know, at Slippery Rock and at IEP. So, uh, so let's go back to, I know it's two weeks ago, but the Slippery Rock game since we didn't talk about it. Another night game and another game that, you know, another night game that came down to the very, very end. Yeah, was uh, unfortunately we weren't able to pull it out. We've kind of been riding that 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 train all year where we were able to get the last score and, and just didn't make a play there at the end of the game. Had, you know, several opportunities, both offense and defensively, to, to end that game. Really proud of the way the kids battled and competed all night long. You know, it was a, a back and forth game. We go up 17 to nothing. They come back and, you know, they end up building a 10 point fourth quarter lead. Mm -hmm. um, and our guys stormed back, and we really had a chance at the end of that game, like I said, both offensively and defensively, to, to put it to bed and, and didn't make the play. And give Slippery Rock credit, they made the play and, and were able to get us an overtime, which was a, a hard one to swallow because I know our guys competed all night long and it, and it was a game we felt like we let slip away from our hands. And that was another game, like you just mentioned it with the the lead, both teams had big leads, both the other team stormed back. So, I mean, I know an old coach adage is you learn a lot from a win, you learn a lot from a loss, but you had to learn a lot because like you said, team was up big, gave up the lead, then got a lead storm back were in a deficit and then got to get that game to overtime was you know just because uh, I think there was like seven minutes left in the game and we were down and then we were up and it was just yeah, a roller coaster it, it, crazy great game. college football game yeah cra crazy game you know we were we were down 10 in the fourth quarter and our guys really responded there wasn't you know anybody panicking anybody worried we went out and made some football plays and and, and got back in it really had a chance with I think you know, two minutes left to go in the game. We're in the red zone, and if we score there, it's a two-score game and, and feel good about it. We just didn't make the play. Um, you got to give Slippery Rock the credit. You know, we get to overtime and had a couple things go, you know, didn't go our way. Tried a long field goal and, and you know, a, a tough field goal for anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was a 49-yarder. Yeah. Weren't able to convert. They they converted their field goal and ended up getting us. So proud of the way our guys battled and competed and, and, and fought and stayed in it. And, you know, anytime you go on the road in the PSAC, it's, it's going to be a, it was a great environment. You know, but when you go on the road in the PSAC, you've got to play your best. And I wasn't sure that we did that. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, Slip Rock's one of those uh, home environments that's kind of unique to the PSAC because it's a stadium that, you know, kind of looks different than anybody else with the two stadiums or the two sides to the stadium. And uh, they did a really good job of, uh, I think they had, it was a first responder night. So you had the fire fire trucks and cannons going off in a full full side. It was a great atmosphere for football. Um, but in that game, uh, you mentioned uh, the offense, defense, special teams a little bit. But, you know, other than the missed field goal, special teams was one of the key contributors. Another block kick, a, a, turn, a forced a turnover on a, on a kickoff return to set up your offense. So, I mean, it was another – I see. We, we think we say it every week, but the special yeah. teams is, is really doing the work for you guys. Really happy with where we are special teams right now. Um, you know, as far as blocking kicks, we seem to, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about the Indiana game where we got a couple there too. Uh, but our guys really buy into special teams. Coach Wilson, I know I say it every week, does a fantastic job of coaching those units. And, you know, we're playing a lot of young guys on those units right now that have kind of, we, we've kind of developed and have kind of grown up in the, in the last couple of weeks. Um, and, and they're eager to, to, to please and do the right thing and, and really happy where we are special teams-wise right now. And on defense, forcing a couple turnovers into the first play of the game. I think uh, we were talking, actually going up to the, to the IEP game, we were talking about the Slippery Rock game, but I think at the end of the Seton Hill game, in the first game, first play of the uh, Slippery Rock game, your defense had two uh, interceptions back-to-back -back by the same player, and one yeah. was a pick six. Yeah, Lamont uh, McFadder is doing a really nice job right now at, at our safety position. He just kind of has a nose for the ball. He, 
You know, he had four straight games with an interception. Uh, he caused a couple fumbles mm -hmm. this week and, and was able to recover one of them. Just a guy that plays extremely, extremely hard and, and has a nose for the football. And when you play as hard as he does, you kind of always find yourself around the football and, and good things happen on defense when you get to the football. And he's definitely been a guy that we've been hearing that number called uh, week in and week out. But that's uh, wrap up uh, what the Slippery Rock talk and then move ahead to the uh, most recent game uh, up at IUP uh, this Saturday. Um, you know, it was a game I think we knew going into um, that they had circled probably since last year, since, you know, California beat them twice. It was their homecoming. Um, beautiful afternoon uh, for college football and a tough opponent at IUP. And I thought your team, you know, that's a tough team. I thought your team fought very, very hard in that football game. Yeah, it was. It, it, they're, they're a very good football team. And I think, you know, you can read it in the newspapers and, and their coaches show that, that they kind of had this one circling on our calendar. And, and, you know, anytime you win a championship, that's what it is. We tell our guys you're going to get everybody's best mm -hmm. shot. And, you know, they, they were ready to play. And I think we were too. You know, we, we didn't play well uh, offensively early. Um, and, and then we kind of got into it there in the, in the second quarter. I thought our defense played well all day. They created turnovers. They created field position. Uh, you know, the problem was they gave up a couple big plays. You know, we had a couple uh, assignment errors that, that caused some, some big plays to happen. But I thought, you know, our defense played extremely hard. Our offense competed. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we just didn't make enough plays to, to win the ball game. Uh, you got to give IUP credit. They, they made the plays when they had to in, in the red zone, and, and we didn't. Um, you know, and that, that's part of playing college football on the road. You got to be at your best when you're on the road and, you know, give IUP credit. They made the plays. Yeah, it seems like watching that game as a fan for the first time, I think, in forever since ESPN3 had the game, uh, we were not able to have any highlights or, or do any of the broadcasts. So I was able to go up there and and watch. It was just interesting to see, you know, that first quarter, like you said, it was, you know, IP came out, you know, they had all the momentum. Defense did a great job of keeping the, you know, minimizing damage uh, offense scored, and then special teams blocking both extra point attempts in the first first half for IEP, and then uh, you guys have a chance um, to, to either take the lead or put points on the board at the end of the first half and, and just stay in that game whenever it seemed like IP had all, all sorts of momentum in that game. Yeah, we, you know, we, we hung around and we, we competed, you know, and, and there at the end of the first half, we, we had an opportunity to take the lead at halftime and, and knowing that we didn't play our, our best football, you know, we get an offensive pass interference call down at the 10 yard line. It backs us up to first and 25. We end up getting some of those yards back, just couldn't overcome that penalty. We kick the field goal and, and go into halftime down 12 to 10 and, and feel good about where we are. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been a real good third quarter team this year, and it's something we're working on. It's something we're talking to our guys about. It's kind of one of those deals where it's, there's really you know no data to explain it. You, know, you go back. I went back last week and watched every possession um, from the offense and the defense in the third quarter, and there's really just you know there's other teams that are making plays, and they've got good players and good coaches too. So it's something we've got to get corrected. We've got to do a little better job of. But, you know, we didn't play well in the first half, and, and we go into the break, we're down 12 to 10 and feel good about where we're at. And then in the second half, like you said, uh, IP made a couple plays uh, to get up, on, uh, get up to uh, a pretty decent lead. But there was never a time that you thought, you know, there was, your team was going to be out of it because it was always only a two-possession game until the very end. Um, and one play here or there, like you said, it takes – it's the butterfly, butterfly effect. One, one play affects everything down the line. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, the, the, the big key to that game was, was them getting that two-score lead because they're a team that loves to run the ball. They create some problems uh, for you because they have a, a tremendous quarterback that can also run the ball. So you're outnumbered in every situation. Um, and, and then they just kind of knew they were in a two-score game and, and, you know, ran the football on us and really chewed the clock and limit, limited our possessions. Um, when we did have the ball offense, we, we struggled to protect a little bit. We never seemed to, uh, to get Mike in a rhythm all day long, and, and, and Mike's kind of our guy. When we can't get him in a rhythm, then we're obviously going to struggle a little bit. Uh, but give IUP credit, you know, the type of offense they run where they're going, you know, they get a two-score lead, they're going to be hard to come back on just because they run the ball so effectively, and then they have a quarterback that adds another dimension to it. Uh, we got into some long down and distances, and, and you know, I had one of those deals where I couldn't believe he completed some yeah. of those balls. We got guys hanging all over him. He throws it up, and that you know that's part of it. Congratulations to them; they made plays. And that uh, kind of puts the ribbon or puts the uh, the exclamation point of the period. That's not an exclamation point; it's a period on the end of the last two weeks. And we can kind of look at this past week scores around the PSAC, uh, starting because we're in the second or third week of divisional play in the PSAC. So let's look at everything that happened in the PSAC West this past weekend. Uh, of course, we see our score. Uh, then Edinburgh and Gannon. Uh, Gannon putting up some points last couple weeks, 47-25 over Edinburgh. Uh, Claren getting a, a close win over Seton Hill. 
33-28, and then uh, Slippery Rock and Mercerist uh, in a dogfight, 31-28. And that was a game that, you know, had kicked off before the Cal IEP game, and they kept announcing the, the scores over the uh, the PA as, uh, address speaker, and that was like, what what is going on? But yeah. like you said, everyone said before, you can't take a week off of this. No. Mercy Harris is playing really good football right now, as, as well as Gannon. Gannon's doing a tremendous job rushing the football um, and obviously putting a lot of points on the board. So, you know, every week you got to show up, especially when you go on the road. You know, I know that game was at Mercyhurst, mm -hmm. and that's a tough place to play. Um, you know, so you got to show up every week, and, and you got to make plays. Let's take a look at what happened in the uh, PSAC East this past weekend. There's a big game this weekend. Uh, we'll get cut down to it in the bottom right-hand corner. Westchester and Shippensburg battle of un, uh, unbeatens in the division going out at Westchester, handing Shippensburg uh, their first loss by a score of 37-27. Uh, Millersville getting a win over East Stroudsburg 12 0. That game was played last Thursday night. Uh, Quitstown over Bloomsburg 23 7. So Quitstown rounding back into form after a couple losses early in the season. And Lockhaven uh, 62 0 over Cheney. But coach, that Westchester Shippensburg game, you know, I know it's October with things going out. You know, that, that's a game that could have implications down the, down the line for, for playoffs and uh, PSAC championship appearances. Yeah, that's a, that's a big win. For On both West, sides. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big win for Westchester, but there's a lot of football left. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got five weeks or, uh, of a season to go. There's, there's, there's plenty of upsets and plenty of things that can happen. So um, it's, it's going to be interesting down the stretch. And let's like, take a look at the standings through uh, this part of the season in the PSAC West, and then we'll look at uh, this upcoming week's opponent, uh, Clarence. So in the PSAC West, IP, Slip Rock, Mercer, California, Edinburgh, Gannon, Clarence, and Seton Hill. But like you said, there's not a lot of separation. Um, you know, a game here and a game there. Yeah, right now, you know, IUP and Slippery Rock are, are, are up top. And, and unfortunately, you know, we, we picked the wrong week for the computer to get on. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you that. You know, having to talk about two losses in one week is not a lot of fun. Uh, but we're going to rebound. We're going we're gonna to get back in this deal. And, and we talked to our guys yesterday about, hey, you know, we got a one-game schedule. We're going to worry about playing Canary, and we're going to put the focus on us and do everything that we can do in our power, control what we can control, and let's go play one game this weekend, get back in this race, and, and get a win. So, you know, it's, it, it's going to be interesting. Well, the good thing is, I mean, you see over our record, four and two, that means there's still five games left, four or five games left. There's enough time to, to do some work because you're playing a number of teams still left on that schedule that, you yeah. know, and they're playing a team. So everyone plays everybody. So, we got we got one game left. One game left. That's this weekend. This, this weekend for homecoming. That's what we got. Well, before we talk about that game and this upcoming week's opponent, let's take a look at uh, what's happening in the PSAC East after this past weekend's uh, results. See Westchester uh, moving to first place over Shippensburg with that win. Uh, they're three and zero, but both Shippensburg and Westchester five one. You have Bloomsburg, Bloomsburg and Quitstown four and two, and then East Charlesburg, Millersville, Lockhaven, and Cheney. So that's what's happening in the PSAC after uh, week three of conference play. And coach, it's time to. Look at this upcoming week's opponent, uh, the Clarion Golden Eagles. Uh, and once again, you know, we haven't seen any highlights because that was a game last year that was we weren't able to broadcast because yeah. of an outside agency doing it. So it's one of those weeks there's no video for anything, so we just have to, to talk about it. But um, it's homecoming this week. Clarion's here. Uh, it's always been a, an opponent that, you know, if they're playing great and we're playing bad, it seems you can, you can throw the records out the book. Absolutely. You know, we went up there last year and, and, and struggled a little bit. You know, it, it, it was a tight ball game. They're a physical, physical bunch that played extremely hard last year. And, and it was a game all night, probably until late in the fourth quarter, and we kind of sealed it. Um, you know, defensively, they're an aggressive bunch. It, it, they, I, I think their defensive line's really, really good. You know, they play and mix up their coverages, mix up pressures. Um, they, they've got a nice scheme, and they're doing a good job coming off a big win. You know, the score was close, but Clarion really controlled that game. Seton Hill got a touchdown late to, to kind of make it closer than it was. Clarion played a really good game defensively. You know, they're going to do a bunch of different things, and, and we've got to be prepared, and we've got to be at our best offensively to, to kind of take advantage and, and, and be able to move the football. Okay. Go ahead. Offensively, <laughs> you know, they're, they're a, a college-style offense, probably very similar to ours. They're, they're playing two quarterbacks right now. Both are talented kids. One's a transfer from a Power Five conference school. Um, the other one's a guy that's been in their program. They run the football, they do a lot of run pass option stuff, a lot of RPO stuff. Um, you know, they kind of seemed to hit their stride against Seton Hill last year. They, last week, they were struggling a little bit offensively, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier in the year, but, you know, put up, you know, 30 some points this week and, and had a nice plan. So we know it's, we're going to have to be at our best to, to beat Clary. And, you know, they're going to come in here and it's our homecoming and they're going to want to spoil that for us. So we've really got to be. You know, what I said earlier, control what we can control and play Vulcan football and, and, you know, look up at the end of the game and we'll figure out where we're at. 
And you were mentioning about the defense earlier when I was, uh, I had an uh, idea or a, a, a conference, not conference, conf I don't know where I'm trying to say. It's been a long, <laughs> it's been a long night. I've been underneath the uh, computer all day trying to fix it. Um, but I know last year at the Clarion game, uh, I was up there doing radio and I noticed their defense, you were mentioning their defense. They played safeties back about as deep as I've ever seen at any level of football. And, that, and it seemed like they were one of the more aggressive teams of trying to change matchups and change looks out of anybody we saw last year. Is that something they've, they've continued to do this year? Yeah, they, but they mix it up a little more uh, this year than they did last year. Last year they did. They played cover two and, and kept their safeties deep. Um, they'll still play a lot of cover two, not quite as deep. Um, but we're a different team than we were last year. So I don't think you know you can really look at what they did last year and, and have a, a plan of what they're going to do this year. Um, it's more about us than them. We've got to take care of our business. You know, they're going to play extremely hard. Like I said, their front four is a really good front four. They've got active linebackers, and, and their secondary can cover. So it's going to be a it's going to be a tough test for our guys, and, and we've got to get back on track, and, and we got to clean some things up that we've been doing. We've got to protect the passer better. Uh, We've got to run the full. We got a lot of things we got to clean up after these last two weeks, and and you know we had a good workout last night. I expect another good one today, and we're going we're going to get back to work and get this thing on track. And being at home has got to be great because uh, regardless of who the opponent was, being on the road back to back weeks uh, is not a good thing. And, and just the fact that it was the two opponents that they were back to back, but you know being back home uh, and homecoming, that's got to be a, a nice little. Uh, boost for the coaching staff and the team. Yeah, we're excited. You know, anytime you can play on homecoming, we've got a lot of alumni that are coming back. We're honoring the 2007 championship team, so it's going to be good to have some of those guys back that, you know, was one of Cal's, one of Cal's best teams mm -hmm. of all time, so we're excited to have those guys back. I know our alumni are going to be here. We need a big student turnout this weekend, which we're expecting for homecoming. We, you know, get behind this bunch and get us back on track. And that leads us into our Twitter question for this week, and it's uh, about homecoming. Uh, and it kind of ties into your playing days or coaching wow. days, whatever. What is your favorite homecoming game memory? That's a that's a great question. I, I <laughs> and think, it can, you can separate. You can say yeah. a memory from a player. Yeah, I don't. Coach. I don't know if high if, school. If it's, it, it was always just to have the guys come back and the alumni come back. You know, when you when I started as a freshman, I had a lot of friends that were were older than me, and you know, those guys go away and start working, and and then to get those guys back for homecoming, it was about, you know almost like a family-like atmosphere to have those guys back. So it's, it's, it's fun to get alumni back in town and, and be able to spend some time. So I know I've got a number of my teammates that are coming back. Uh, we got a young – one of my guys from New York's coming, another guy from Ohio's coming. Uh, so it, it's going to be fun just to, to be, be able to spend time with old friends. I think that's what homecoming's about. I tell you what, looking at the weather uh, a few days out, it looks like it's going to be a spectacular day for homecoming maybe breaking that streak of about 27 straight years of rain <laughs> in California for homecoming. So make sure you can come out to the game. It's going to be a good one. Come out to the parade beforehand. Enjoy everything. If you're an alum of Cal, come dive it back. If you haven't been to the campus, come back and see what you've been missing because, you know, it's changed a lot in the last couple yeah. of years. Just in the last couple, last five years there's been changes. So um, Yeah, a lot of special events this weekend. You got the parade. You got the 2007 team here, you know, the, the championship team here. So it's, it's, it's going to be a fun weekend here in California. Now, are you going to be able to have any of the uh, 2007 players interact? Uh, or, or I, I'm hoping speaker? to. I just don't yeah. know the schedule. I, the, you know, we have an open door policy for alumni. They're allowed in the locker room anytime they want. Hopefully, you know, those guys are really, really good football players. Hopefully, they've come back into the locker room and talk with some of our guys. Hopefully, some will be in on on Friday night and hopefully speak to the team on Friday. But just excited to have those guys back and, and, and share the, the experience with them because it was a special bunch. And since it is homecoming, that means it's a special kickoff time, 3 o'clock at Adamson Stadium. Um, parade's at noon, so come down. Like I said, if you go to the parade, just come straight up and enjoy uh, everything that there is in a college uh, homecoming Saturday. And real quickly before we go, let's take a look at the other games of the PSAC because, uh, like I said, we're in the middle of PSAC divisional play. And, of course, this time of year you've got – Kickoff times all over the map. Um, Stroudsburg, Kutztown, Bloomsburg, Westchester, Ship and Cheney, IEP, Slippery Rock, Mercer, at Edinburgh, Lock Haven, Millersville, Clarion, Cal, and Gannon at Seton Hill. Coach, I, I, I don't think it, it takes a genius to <laughs> understand what game, other yeah. than the Cal game, people should be paying attention to this week. Yeah, obviously that Indiana Slippery Rock game is, is going to be a good one. Two really, really good teams, two well-coached teams that play extremely hard. It's going to be, it's going to be a good matchup. Uh, you know, obviously we we drew the short end of that straw playing both of them back to back, and they each had a week off between them. But IUP's got to go us to Slippery Rock, so uh, you know that that's the game, obviously. And then, then just really excited to get back out on the field and get our guys competing again. And make sure to come up, like I said, Adamson Stadium this Saturday at three o'clock. Bring out the, all your red and black. Bring out your uh, your lungs to make some noise and make it a great home atmosphere for California. If you can't make it to the game, uh, two ways of uh, keeping track: WCAO have the live online radio feed on their uh, 
online source, and then you can watch the game live on CUTV Sports 1. Uh, coverage will come on probably about uh, 2.55. So plenty of ways to stay involved with the California Vulcans football team. And, Coach, uh, any last words before we uh, wrap it up? Great day to tailgate. Great day to come <laughs> support Vulcan football. It's, it's going to be a fun, fun weekend here in California. Sounds good, Coach. Good luck this weekend against Clarion. I hope to see a lot of fans in the stands at Addison Stadium. Once again, 3 o'clock on Saturday. For Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. You've been watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV.